Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that's a confession that we need you, Lord. And the Bible tells us you are much closer to us, O oh Father. As Paul told us, that the word in your mouth, you don't have to say will ascend up to heaven to bring God down, but it's close to you by the word of your mouth, you can confess Jesus. And then you told us, Heavenly Father, you've removed the wall of partition and you brought us closer to you by the blood of Jesus. Father, we need you, Lord, for without you, we cannot do anything. And Father, what a blessed hope in our hearts to know that we are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. How close can we ever be, Lord? To be the body of Christ, that Heavenly Father, we can feel his heartbeat. We can feel what he wants done, oh Father. We can know Heavenly Father, the Bible tells us, we are ambassadors of God to this earth. But we are the citizens of heaven. How we thank Heavenly Father for blessed hope. Heavenly Father, to know you've exalted your name. And Heavenly Father, your name has drawn us from sin. Father, and trespasses, Lord. And has placed us between, oh Father, Lord God. Where we know, Lord Jesus Christ, we can never fall back. For nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That in Christ we are accepted in the beloved. And Heavenly Father, Lord, what you required us, Lord Jesus Christ, to do, you already did it in the body of Christ when he died on the cross. We appreciate you this morning. We call upon you to come and manifest yourself to us. Speak to us in a language that we shall understand. Amen. Our notes, our preparation, our aside, but your preparation to speak to your people, let it be the thing that is going to stand between us. We appreciate you. We call upon you to be with us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy to be here again this morning. Greetings from uh, Brother Morano, who will not be, he thought will be here with us. And uh, Sister Jael and uh, the rest. We appreciate God for the grace he's given you. Amen. Amen. I want us to go straight to the scriptures. We don't want to waste time. Uh, sometimes you just, you wonder how prepared are you when you realize you have got so much to speak within a very short time. Let's go. We are just going to read the same scripture we read last Sunday. Our message is the same. The body of Christ and the bride of Christ. There is a lot of things to be spoken in between that we want to follow closely. And um, I have a very interesting scripture here that uh, I'm going to read it and then we see where do we place that scripture. So we are reading Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. I want us to begin running. Amen. Let us be glad and rejoice. Give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. You watch out that word saints. Amen. Because uh, if God give us grace, we'll want to find out where that word is used in the Bible and to whom it also applies. That word saints is used three times in the Bible to two, three, three times in the Bible and three categories of people in the scriptures. Let's go to a longer reading of Revelation chapter 21 verse 9. That was uh, Revelation 19 verse 7. Let's go to Revelation 21 verse 9. We actually didn't know this book of Revelation is actually put chronologically in order. But we used to read it here, here, read here, read here, and say, you know, it's a book of symbols, so we don't understand what it is. We actually did not understand the audience to whom the book of Revelation is written to until right now. That's why we have got hundreds of scriptures when we come to church to tie them together. And just knowing how God loved Israel, how he bore Israel in all perseverance of a husband. Only reading that story about Israel. And then you come to realize God loves you. You know what that means. And there came unto me one of the seven angels who had seven bowls or vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. It is an angel that has got the last plagues. 
So this woman that is coming to be seen, she's just coming in before judgment is set. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and a high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven and from God. He is invited to come and see the bride, the lamb's wife, but he is now shown a city. And this city is not Washington, it's not Nairobi, it is not Brasilia, it's not Adelaide, but it's holy Jerusalem coming from heaven. Amen. Having the glory of God and her light was like a stone most precious, even like Jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and the gates were were, and on the gates were twelve angels, and the names written on the gates, which are the names of the Gentiles. And the name written on the gate, which was the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Amen. And on the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. Exactly the way they were camping in the wilderness in the book of Numbers. Three on the north, three on the east, three on the south, three on the west. But this time, it is these three has got the name of the twelve. The, uh, uh, and uh, let me just repeat it. And it had a great wall and a high and had twelve gates. And the gate twelve angels. Names written on the gates which are the names of the twelve tribes. The same thing that happened. It's coming back. But now it's on a city. It is not the coming, how they camped. Where is it written if you remember? Numbers, Numbers chapter. <coughs> Numbers chapter 2. Is where we have got this kind of arrangement. It was the children of Israel. Coming out of Egypt. And God told them how they need to arrange. He says three will be on the north. Three tribes. Three on the east. Three on the south. Three on the west. We are seeing the same arrangement in the wilderness. But now on a city called Jerusalem. Called the wife of the lamb. Even that one before you hear anything. You just want to ask. So where are the Gentiles here? What program does God have with the Gentiles? And on the east three gates. On the north three gates. On the south three gates. And on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. If the 12 apostles of the Lamb is Paul included, praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Let's just continue reading while you're seated. If that the 12 apostles of the Lamb, what makes you think? Paul is found here. How many disciples did Jesus call? Twelve disciples. How many apostles received the Holy Ghost? Yeah, fast. Okay, fast. Apostles that received the Holy Ghost. Twelve, right? I know you are talking about 120. I'm not talking about the people that received the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the apostles which were disciples in the, in the four books. And that is long after Judas Iscariot had hanged himself. And they had replaced him with Matthias. And then these twelve received the Holy Ghost. The twelve apostles. So when the Bible is saying, and the twelve apostles of the Lamb. It does not say it and the apostles but it says 12 apostles of the lamb not 13 because if you add Paul it will make them 13 because some theological man came and told you hey you know what is happening uh, Paul came and replaced Matthias it is him that is saying that but the bible does not say Matthias was replaced when the holy spirit came in the day of Pentecost 
to those who are gathered in the upper chamber. He never said, you people, you chose Matthias to replace Judas Iscariot. I'm bringing Paul in Acts chapter 9. No, he didn't. He sanctioned what they had done. You know why? He had told them already, what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. He told Simon Peter. And it's Simon Peter that talked about the necessity of bringing in another apostle to replace Judas Iscariot. And they received the Holy Ghost. So the Bible says, and the 12th apostle of the Lamb, Paul is not included. So we must track Paul and find out if Paul you are not here, then our gate to enter in is not in there. Praise the Lord. And he talked with me and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he talked with me and had a golden reed to measure the city and gates of it and, and its wall. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with a reed 12,000 furlong, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall of it, 144 cubits, giving us 144,000. According to the measure of man, that is of the angel. And the building of the wall, it was of jasper and the city was pure. Gold like clear glass. And the foundation of the city was garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third jalastony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, sardonyx the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth tobas, the tenth crystal brass, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth an amethyst. So we have got twelve gates. Twelve stones. Twelve what? Let's go in. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. And each one of them was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. And it was transparent glass. And the foundation? The foundation of the city had the twelve names of apostles of the Lamb. Now, we had to locate our place in the city. Is there a place for a Gentile? If this city is dressed Jewish and then the city turns out to be the Gentile, something is wrong somewhere. If you look at the stones 12 according to the number of the children of Israel, you look at the gate 12, you look at the pearls 12, you look at the foundation 12. You look at the angels, 12. And when you are look, looking for these, you will go to the book of Exodus chapter 25. You will find there were 12 stones on the brass blade of Aaron, the high priest. Praise the Lord. When you go to the gate, it is all Jewish. And I'm coming out of a Gentile, I'm calling myself the one that is supposed to enter into that city. And while I'm coming, I choose to say I don't want to get into the city by the gate of Dan or the gate of Judah. I say, mm, I prefer, I think I like Dan. When I go to the gate of Dan, there is a list of the people who are supposed to get into the city. They must declare who is their father. Because that's how they were arranged in the book of Numbers. And then I'm looking for Paul. And I find Paul is missing. On the foundation, there is no foundation of Paul. There is the foundation of Peter, of James, and so on and so forth, and of Matthias. And then I'm looking for the foundation of Paul. I have no foundation. Am I invited in the city? Paul, you say it in the scriptures. God called you. And said, I send you to the Gentiles. Where is my place in the city, Paul? And Paul would answer, say, I'm not even in that city myself. 
So how do I get in? Because when Jesus talked about when Simon Peter cut the, the ear of uh, Marcus, Sam, uh, Jesus Christ said, don't you think I've got the power to ask my father to give me 12 legions of angels? Even angels are divided according to the number of the children of Israel. Amen. Amen. If I don't have something, if I don't have something much more than that, then I'm doomed. Because the place is already full. Yes. Why did Jesus choose 12? Why, why was Israel, Joseph, uh, Jacob, given 12 sons? Why do we have 12 months? Why do we have 12 manner of fruit? Why do we have 12 apostles? 12 foundations? 12, 12, 12. That is a Jewish number. Amen. That is how they began. Amen. So someone must preach very hard to show me where I belong in the city. And that's why we are saying the body of Christ is not the bride of Christ. Amen. Because one has to go in through the door, through the gate. Another one gets in by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. By one spirit you are baptized in the body but for them they have to get through the gate if you are from the tribe of dan amen, amen. look for the gate of dan amen. if you are the tribe of judah look for the tribe of the gate of judah if you are the tribe of asha in the north look for the gate of asha where are the Gentiles here? No Gentile. What program does God have for the body of Christ? Well, we can begin. Praise the Lord. There is a scripture here. I want to begin on that note. Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. It talks about people that call themselves Jews and they are not Jews. And God says, I'll make you the synagogue of Satan. If God is very keen with who is the Jew and who is not the Jew, how can you come in and say Jerusalem is you? When every description is Jewish. Even the government is 12 Jewish. And the children of Israel are the ones that were given the 12 stones. Each one had a stone. You know that? Each one of the children of Israel had a stone. None of us was given a stone. And the 12 stones are the same stones. They appear on the breastplate of Aaron the high priest. And if you looked at Jerusalem from far, it looks exactly like the high priest. Because on top is the light on top of Jerusalem. White. That's the way the high priest was. When you come down, you see the 12 stones. That's the way the high priest was dressed. You go all the way. If you take Jerusalem as a person, he will not be a Gentile, but he will be the high priest in the way he's dressed. 12 stones. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you talk about the measurement of that city, it is all Jewish. 144 cubits. It's not us at all. That looks like an opinion until when you go back to the scriptures to find out. Amen. Amen. If I have to go to why this new Jerusalem comes all the way in Revelation chapter 21, after a lot of things have happened, you'll be surprised why this is the last thing before they enter into the kingdom. Now, we can now begin. There are only two people spoken of in the Bible. And there are only two places spoken of in the Bible. You could also assist me, give me some. That is the heaven and the earth. Amen. Those are the two places. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I want to go slowly, amen? Amen. 
in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Then in the Bible, Paul comes and tells us about a heavenly people. I'm not going there because I want to get my direction clear. Then there is the earth that will be given to a people forever. And we can't say the reason God created the heaven, he created the heaven for himself. We can't say that. You know why? Because he created the heaven and the earth long before he already existed. So God did not create the heaven because he needed it. He already existed without the heaven, without the earth. He had a purpose why he created the heaven and he had a purpose why he created the earth. So there are only two rims. There is the heaven and there is the earth. Amen. And the heaven and the earth gives God a title called El Elyon. And El Elyon means the possessor of the heaven and the earth. Amen. Amen. And then we find the devil himself in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. He wanted to be like the most high God. Which means he wanted to be like El Elyon. He wanted the heaven and the earth. And the battle is confined to these two places. The battle in heaven and the battle on earth. Amen. Amen? And God has had divisions in the Bible. And the Bible tells us that study, thy, study to show thyself as a man approved of God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. If the word, the Bible has got division in it, we must know what are the blessings of Israel and what are the blessings of we people called the body of Christ. If you check throughout the Bible, the word, the body of Christ was a whole new language. It was never used by Peter, nor the James or John. It is only Paul who used the word, the body of Christ. And Paul never used the word, the bride of Christ. In all the letters he used the body of Christ. He never used the word, the bride of Christ. And then when you come to the book of uh, Revelation, it is the book of Revelation that uses the word, the bride. But now when we look in the, in the entire Bible, we see the bride is spoken of in the Old Testament. Amen? So my question would be, in John chapter 1 verse 29, John chapter 1 verse 29, and I would want you to ask a question if you are just moving on. I want you just to be a little bit relaxed. John chapter 1 verse 29, what does it talk about? Yes, just someone, just tell me. I have many scriptures to read. What does it say? The next day John see Jesus coming unto him and saying, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He was showing the Lamb of God to the children of Israel. Amen? Amen. Then there was a time when the Lord Jesus Christ was asked, How come your disciples don't fast? What did he say? Yeah, I want us to go slowly. What did he say? Let's refresh our mind. He said this. The children of the bride chamber. Amen. Amen. You can read it elsewhere, but it's, I'm, I'm reading Luke chapter, chapter 5, verse 34. From verse 33. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often? And make prayers, and, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees. You know the Pharisees also are disciples. <coughs> likewise the disciples of the, the Pharisees. So the disciples of the Pharisees were fasting, and the disciples of John were fasting. 
But it happened that the disciples of Jesus Christ were not fasting. Now, the disciples of John, who did not follow the Lord Jesus, are the same ones that Apollos, there were those ones that Paul found in, in Acts chapter 19, that they had been baptized by the baptism of John, and have not received the Holy Ghost. So these are the people in John pointed out, behold the Lamb of God, they never followed the Lamb. And because they never followed the Lamb, they never went to Pentecost to receive the Holy Ghost. Because when John said, behold the Lamb of God, the Bible said from that day, Peter and Andrew followed Jesus. And when they followed him, they went all the way up to the upper chamber and received the Holy Ghost. But now in Acts chapter 19, amen, amen, there are people that Paul is asking, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Amen. So was it faith or no faith? Hallelujah. Amen. These are the believers following John, but they never believed the message of John. Because he said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world and Simon, Peter, and Andrew and the rest followed and they received the Holy Ghost in the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Many chapters later, there are people still that are saying we are the disciples of John. Now, Apollos was one of them. Amen. Until he took a family called Aquila and Priscilla to instruct Apollos that the one John was bringing the baptism to prepare the people for him. And he came, died, and resurrected. Even he brought the Holy Ghost. Then Apollos received the Holy Ghost. Amen. But I think he never went to his people. Because the Bible says, while Apollos was at Corinth, and Paul having passed the upper coast of Ephesus, found some believers and asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, no, we have not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Then he said, how are you baptized? The baptism of John. Now those are the guys who were here. Because the Bible says, Jesus had disciples that were not fasting. But the Pharisees and John had disciples that were fasting. So they wanted to find out, why aren't your people fasting? What was the answer? Can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then they shall fast in those days. So the question is, who is the bridegroom here? Jesus is the bridegroom. Amen. Now, Jesus presents himself as the bridegroom long before he died. So when he came, that was the bridegroom. The death of Jesus never made him a bridegroom. He already was a bridegroom. And John called himself the friend of the bridegroom. So the bridegroom was there before Paul came. The children of the bride chamber was there before we were born. I'm not talking about the natural birth. I'm talking about before the church, the body of Christ came. So Jesus Christ was already the bridegroom. The disciples are called the children of the bride chamber. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what happened to this wedding? Did Jesus change his mind? Is this a bridegroom was coming to wed? And he doesn't know where the bride is going to come from? Before he sends Paul, can you imagine a bridegroom that comes? Nowadays they do. You just, and then it becomes news, right? That the bridegroom comes and then he's trying to take a wife. I've not even come across that. Then he changes his mind. He says, no, she's not the very one. Can so and so go and look for me a bride? Is this the condition you want to make the Lord Jesus Christ to be? Such an prepared man. He comes and calls himself the bridegroom. And John is the forerunner of the bridegroom. And he calls himself the friend of the bridegroom. Give us that scripture. Hallelujah. The friend of the bridegroom. 
it's going to show us clearly why Elijah then, John, was the friend of the bridegroom and why Elijah in the future will be the friend of the bridegroom too. Amen. John? 329, can you read for us? He that has the bride is the bridegroom. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy. This is my joy. So John is called himself the friend of the bridegroom that rejoices to hear the voice of the bridegroom. What had happened before John called himself the friend of the bridegroom? Verse 28. John, they said, verse 25. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples <laughs> and the Jews about purifying. Then they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom bear his witness, behold, the same baptized, and all men come to him. So there were some disciples who were with John. They said, Sisi at Wajim Jumbe Wetu. We are here with John. And John has pointed to the people and he never chased them away. Then the people are like, why is that man baptizing? Because it is John who came with the baptism. You told us about him, now he's baptizing. Then the answer of John was, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. You yourself bear me witness that I am not the Christ. I love this in the prophets. He comes and says, I'm not Christ. Amen. Then another one comes and says, this is Christ in flesh. And this one says, I'm not Christ. Amen. When they ask him, who are you? Are you Elias? He says, no. Are you that prophet which was promised in Deuteronomy? He says, no. Who are you? I'm the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. He didn't ask people, who do you think I am? He didn't go to say, do you think this ministry God has given me fits Elijah? He knew who he was. But why did he refuse that he's not Elijah? Because that he was not Elijah. But he came with the spirit of Elijah. Amen. And then he says, you yourself bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ. But I am the one sent before him. And he that had the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which is standing and hearing him, rejoices greatly. Hallelujah. That's the joy of the friend of the bridegroom. The, now, why would John rejoice if the bride was not even there? What is wrong with John? So in the days of Jesus, was the days of the bride and the bridegroom and the friend of the bridegroom. So your man, if that's true. But something must have happened to stop this procession from coming to culmination. Something must have happened that made this feast to stop before it went all the way. Because if the marriage feast went all the way, there would have never been a body of Christ. There would have never been Paul being sent to you. Because it is already finished. Then Matthew 25. The kingdom of heaven is likened to ten virgins who went out to meet their bridegroom. Some were foolish, others were wise. And this wedding is being done in the night. So this one that is being done in the night and the one that Paul comes in, is it First Thessalonians? Okay, I want people that understand the scriptures. Where does Paul say you are not the children of the darkness? If there is the greatest thing you need to pray for this time, it is for you to understand the scriptures and know where they are located. Where is it written? First Thessalonians? It is very surprising.
Because God, God in the book of Revelation chapter 9, he is very keen on those who call themselves Jews and they are not. Huh? And this has been one of the greatest controversies. <coughs> Was it reading the book of Revelation? No, 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 I want to go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 3, verse 9. I know their works and tribulation and the poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogue of Satan. God is so strict about who calls himself a Jew. So in like manner, he must be very strict on who calls himself Jerusalem and is not. Amen? Amen? Amen. If God is very strict on who calls himself a Jew, how can you come and take the blessing of a Jew? For you to take the blessing of a Jew, you must call yourself a Jew. And there must be, there is no promise of God about you in the Bible. That's why you are fumbling, trying to take somebody's promise. Two nine, Revelation two nine. That's the place where we are reading. Those who call themselves Jews, and I'll make them the synagogue of Satan. So God was in the book of Revelation. God was dealing with who is a Jew. That's why he's saying there are people who call themselves Jews. By the way, even the people who call themselves Jews here are not even the Gentiles. Are there false Jews that don't follow what God is doing for the Jews at that time? They are coming to impersonate the real Jew. If God is going to separate the false Jews from the Jew, how can he mix the Gentile and the Jew and allow the Gentile to call himself a Jew? If God is very strict on who a Jew should be, praise the Lord. Amen. What do we see in the book of, um, we wanted to read the book of Thessalonians. You know, someone is asking, so what are we? We are the body of Christ. Amen. But of the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. That is First Thessalonians chapter 5. For you yourself know perfect that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For then, sh for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them and reveal upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. But you brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. When Jesus talked about the marriage in the gospel, he says, watch for you do not know the day. It will come to you as a thief in the night. But Paul says, the one that will receive a thief in the night is not you. Because you are not the children of darkness. Does he say that? You brethren are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of light and the sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So this wedding that takes place in the night cannot be your wedding. If there are two weddings, then we must divide. The one of the night and the one of the day. Amen. 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 But we don't have two weddings because there is no scripture for two weddings. There is a scripture for two unions. The reason why marriage and wedding are employed in the Bible, it is talking about how God unites with man. And God has got two types of people that he's going to unite with. Israel and the Gentile. And Israel shall be united with, the, with him before he goes into the kingdom. But for you, you get united with him when you accept him. Until the Bible says, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That is present tense. Or can you hear someone, that, that's what someone called invisible union. Nothing like it. Invisible union is where, that message is where women are demoralized. Is where they are told you can never be forgiven 
and never justified. That is not me. Me, the Bible says, we can lay charge on God's elect. Therefore, there is no condemnation those who are in Christ Jesus. Because my union makes me the body of Christ. But their union makes them the bride of Christ. The body of Christ and the bride of Christ must be different. Because my body and my wife, as much as she's my body, she's different from me. The Bible calls you the bride? No, it calls you the body of Christ. And the body of Christ must be much closer to Christ than his own bride. You've forgotten what we went in the other time. We are still asking the question. If the bride of Jesus is the Gentile, what happened to his wife? Did he divorce her and is marrying again? But as the scriptures say, he's going to call her and bring her to himself? Let's see how it began. We want to look at Israel, where it began. Let us read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 2. Before that, I want us to read, I want us to read um, Songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5. Songs of Solomon can give you trouble a little bit, yeah? Sometimes you don't know where it's located. I want all of us to be there. If you are, you are on Proverbs, you are closer to the Songs of Solomon. And if you are on the book of Isaiah, just come back a little bit. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5. Who is this who cometh up from the wilderness? Leaning upon her beloved. Who's that? She's not leaning upon him. He is leaning upon her. And they're coming from the wilderness. Now, where is Israel? Where did this marriage begin? Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousal, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sworn. Hallelujah. God is now saying, it all began in the wilderness. In the wilderness is where Israel went for God. Jeremiah. And he's calling it the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousal. This is the time where they got attracted to each other. Hallelujah. Let's go on. It is in the wilderness where God loved Israel. And when he loved Israel, he entered into a covenant with Israel. And the covenant was a marriage covenant. Amen? Amen? Yeah, we are just reading Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. Are you there? Jeremiah 31, 31. We have to repeat some of these things. We have not to repeat, but we must repeat some of these things. We are now looking at where it all began. Before you say, this is the bride, this bride that was married in the wilderness must have lost her identity and God must have given up on her and then has come to look for another woman in the Bible. Then God has got a problem with his love life more than you do. If God loved a woman and he divorced her forever, he will never have her again. God will have to change. Jeremiah 31, 31. 
Behold, the days comes with the Lord, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in that day that I took them by the hand and bring them in the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them. So this covenant, as we said, was a marriage covenant. So they broke a marriage covenant with God. But God is saying he's going to make another covenant with them. Amen. And then he's saying, if he makes this covenant with them, something is going to change in this covenant. So where is the new covenant? If the new covenant does not produce a husband as God and Israel as a wife, then the new covenant is weak than the first covenant. If the first covenant had a man and his wife and the second covenant has a man and a servant, then the Bible says he took away the first one that he can bring the second one on better promises. Amen. What benefit does Israel get from the new covenant that was not there in the first covenant? A good question, right? Now, let's go on. The Bible says this. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I'll put my laws in their inward parts and write in their hearts and I'll be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no man, every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord, for I'll forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sin no more. Verse 35. Thus saith the Lord who giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, who divided the sea when it roars, wave roars, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall cease from me being a nation before me forever. Amen. So he's saying, if the sun will be the moon and all the ordinances, if they will continue being, that is how strong the love of Israel. The love of God for Israel shall remain. Amen. And if it was a covenant love, it will not change. Say amen if that's true. Amen. He says these things cannot change and his love for Israel cannot change. Amen. Is that true? Amen. So we are trying to find out, are we trying to take another person's blessing? Chapter 16 of the book of Ezekiel, we are repeating that. No, I verse 5. No, I pitied thee to do any of these things unto you, to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out in the open field to the loosing of thy person in the day thou was born. And when I passed thee and saw the, thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live ya, and I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. And I caused thee to multiply as a bird of the field. And thou hast increased and become great. And thou art come so excellent, come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, where thou was naked and bare. When thy, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold thy time of love. Thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yeah. I saw unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord. Thou becamest mine. Amen. Then I washed thee with the waters. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. And I anointed thee with oil. Clothed thee also with embroidered work. And shod thee with the badger skins. And gathered thee about thy fine linen. And covered thee with silk. And decked thee with ornaments. And I put a bracelet upon thy hands. And a chain in thy neck. And I put a jewel in, the, in thy nose. And earring in thy ears. And a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thou was decked with gold and silver. And thy raiment was of fine linen and silk. A broidered work. A man is going through his history. His love life with his wife. Amen. And he's talking about the things he did for his wife. 
If there will be a person that will separate Israel from God, then God is not faithful to his word. Amen. Because he has said, if there will be the sun and the moon, if they will still remain, they, Israel, will still remain, be mine. If you will come and separate Israel from God, then God is a weak man who cannot put his house in order. Then God cannot reconcile to his wife. Then I don't know what I would do if I've got a disagreement with my wife. Because I'm trying to depend on a God whose wife has left him and is doing nothing about it. Then I don't know when there is a disagreement between you, whom shall you turn to when he has got the same problem? When you approach him and say, God, my husband left me. I'm asking for him to come back. Amen. Then God tells you, I have the same problem. <laughs> then you stand and say, you don't have an kumkimbilia because the person you want to restore the marriage has a marriage problem he has not settled. Amen. 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 Thus was dead in with gold and silver, and the raiment was of my fine linen and silk, and he buried what thou did eat fine flour and honey and oil. And that was exceedingly beautiful. And thou didst prosper into our kingdom. Amen. He's talking about the splendor. Amen. And the beauty of the kingdom of Israel. Amen. Under David and Solomon. Amen. That's how God looked at this woman. And he said you became mine. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He became mine. Jeremiah chapter 3. What happened to this woman? And I want to show you in the scripture God has been doing something about it. That's how when John came they should have waited for such a man because he's now saying I am the friend of the bridegroom. Something must have happened to this woman that is committing adultery. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the hallowed with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Amen. 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 God is saying naturally, if a woman gets married to another man, she cannot return. If she does, the land would be polluted. But for you, Israel, return. Amen. For you, return. Amen. Amen. I don't see why Israel was forsaken forever. Paul says after the fullness of the gender, Israel shall be saved and shall be given all their privileges. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 54. I'm just trying to read them from, from my memory. Sing, 54 verse 1. Sing all barren that did not bear. Break into singing and cry loud. Thou didst not travail with the child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. In like the place of thy tent, and let them stretch for the curtains of thine inhabitation. Spare not lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth in the right hand and on the left, and shall inherit the nations, and make this of the cities to be inhabited. I have jumped. Verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And forget the shame of thy youth, and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts. Amen. Is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall be called. Who is the husband here? I'm showing you knowing what you are not so that you can understand what you are. Amen. Amen. The Holy One of Israel is the husband. The maker. For the Lord hath called thee like a woman forsaken. When was she forsaken? She was forsaken when she brought in other men 
instead of God. Then God forsook her. After forsaking her, he's now telling her, return. Amen. That's the love of God's life. Amen. Each one of us has a love story. Amen. This is the love story of God and it's a painful story. Amen. If God can put up with a man, if God could bear with Israel like that, and then someone comes, a preacher may be walking on bare food, and then he tells you the story about the love of God. And then he tells you this God loves you. You would say, is that true? This man must have really suffered. If you could bear with Israel like that, what can separate us from the love of God? Amen. 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 For the Lord had called thee like a woman for second. And grieved in spirit. A wife of youth. Amen. Oh, Onesimus, can you read that scripture for us? Loud enough. Isaiah 54. Verse 6. You know, sometimes you are just riding. You know, you don't know what to do sometimes. Sometimes you are riding and sometimes you are reading. So, do I read or do I write? If I read, I will forget. Let me write so that I will read later. Isaiah 54 verse 6. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman for second, and great in spirit, and a wife of youth, when you, when you was refused, said God. Yeah. For a small moment yeah. have I forsaken thee. For a small moment have I forsaken thee. Yeah. But with great mercies. With great mercies. I, thee. I will gather thee. In a little wrath, in a little wrath I, hid my face from thee. I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, the man, will I have mercy on thee, said the Lord, thy Redeemer. The man, verse 9. For this is as the water of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah shall no more go over the earth, Amen. so have I sworn that I will not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. Amen. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. Amen. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, say the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. Are you seeing a tunnel connection with God with his people? He says, At the waters of Noah was, which I said it shall be no more, of us shall not cover the earth. So I have sworn I would not be angry with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not be out from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed with the, saith the Lord who hath the mercy on thee. Amen. Now, is this saying God is going to leave Israel forever? So and then you see when John came, that was a great moment. They should have been looking out for this man when he called them to go into the wilderness again. Amen. That is where God made them. Amen. On the foot of Mount Horeb. Amen. Do you know Horeb is Sinai? Yes. Do you know Mount Sinai is Horeb? Amen. So when he comes in the book of Malachi 4 and says, Remember ye the law of Moses on Mount Horeb. Amen. It is marriage time he's talking about. Amen. No, read for us Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Are you seeing God bring that man, that that time again, but this time with Elijah. Remember ye the law of Moses. Remember ye the law of Moses. My servant. My servant which, I commanded unto him in Horeb, for which I commanded him unto Horeb. He is telling them to remember the covenant Amen. on Mount Horeb. This time he is enjoining Elijah. And Elijah will now come as a friend of the bridegroom. Are you seeing it? Amen. 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 Read that part. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel. For all Israel. Uh -huh. With the statutes and judgment. With the statutes and judgment. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Now, he's not going to send them Elijah the prophet just for the sake of it. He's telling them, do you remember Mount Horeb? What happened in Mount Horeb? They were married. Amen. He's saying, now remember that. Now I'll send you Elijah. As what? As the friend of the bridegroom. Amen. Say amen somebody. Amen. 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 
If he tells you to remember Horeb, how do you remember Horeb? You. If he tells Israel, remember Horeb, they remember the days of their youth. Jeremiah 2.2. In the days of their espousal, when they went after God in the wilderness. Amen. So God tells them, remember, another time like that is coming again. Amen. This time it is Elijah I am sending. Amen. And then Elijah came and said, I am the friend of the bridegroom. Amen. No, you just give him a clap. Amen. Remember, repeat that. Remember ye the Lord Moses my servant, yes. which I commanded unto him in order for all Israel in the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send to Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day. Nataka to fika pale. Why is remembering Horeb connected with Elijah? Don't you have the answer already? Why is Horeb mentioned and then a promise of Elijah is connected? Why isn't other thing mentioned? It is the love of their first time. Amen. It is God saying, Let's go to Jeremiah 2, 2. We read it already. But let us go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee. Aki, this is a man. This is a man. Something has come between him and his wife. And he's saying, go tell that woman. God tell her I remember that day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he comes in the book of Revelation. You have forgotten your first love. Amen. How can that be a Gentile? Amen. If you listen to what I'm talking about, if you're a man and you've left your wife, you will go back for her. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor listening to me that rejoice in divorcing your wives. If you listen to this story, it's a painful story of God's love for Israel. Amen. Until he's sending someone. Go! What does your Bible say? Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem. Who is here? Who is being mentioned? Jerusalem. 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 Who is getting married in the book of Revelation chapter 21? Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. She was so kind. He's talking about the time they ate what? They ate some kebab somewhere. They went somewhere walking around the... the, 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 the. You know why my wife is laughing? She remember the time when we, 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 we were courting, and then they could, they could cook some food there. You know she kept it and packed it for me. And we could meet somewhere in the wilderness. <laughs> and that time we have got a radio. A cassette with a tape of William Branham. And then he press and we listen. And then some Branham had stole that radio. And then told me that it has been taken. He forgot in the vehicle and he stole it. And then she could, when I come, you know we could even buy Mbune. You know Mbune? We don't call them Mbune. Some fruits I come from because I was working with Kenya National Trading Corporation. I would come, purchase some bune, and then take it. And then she's coming with some roasted, not roasted, boiled. Boil. You know she remembers. <laughs> 28 years ago. Come with the boiled maize. So I come with my package. We sit down with the radio cassette. And we put on a message called choosing of the bride. <laughs> and listen to it. And then God is saying, I remember thy kindness. I was telling my children, was it Junior, that one day I bought my wife when, we, when she was in Nairobi University. I went to the supermarket. It was called Ukwala. It was not Ukwala that time. It was Nak Nakuru mattresses. And bought red rubbers, read them, college girl. And she was in the University of Nairobi. I took it and I really felt good. And then she, she bought me a cardigan. What do you call it? Is it a cardigan or what is it? Half sweater. Red one. I still remember it today. She brought that and praise the Lord. God says I remember. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is remembering man. God is saying I remember that love when you went after me in the wilderness. 
how you are pursuing after me. Then in the book of Ezekiel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee the kindness of thy youth. The love of thine is pausal. God remembers that love. Amen. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord. Did I read it? Israel was holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruit of his increase, all that that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Then I come and tell you, he loves you. You don't even have to go through how he loves you. Just go how he dealt with Israel. And ask him, are you done with Israel? I will restore. And bring her to me. What the kanga was eaten. Someone preached to you and called it restore the bride tree. That was nonsense. Go and read the entire book of chapter chapter 1 of Joel and chapter 2. You realize this is the condition of the land of Israel when he forsook them. Then God said, but I will restore those years. Then someone said, that was you. When did you get separated from the love of God? When did the kanga worm and the palom come to eat your love between you and Christ? Hear the word of the Lord, O Jacob. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel, saith the Lord. What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they gone after me, and have walked, they have gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and become vain. Now, I want you, I want you to see a man, because he's saying, go, he has sent, and then he's going to tell them, go ask them, what did I go? What did I do wrong? This is a man. No, someone read for us a scripture. You are not there yet. If I rely on you, I won't move. It says, I say the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity and become vain. Neither say they, where is the Lord who brought us out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts, and of pits, through a land of drought, and the shadow of death, through the land that no man passed through, where no man dwelled, and brought you into plenteous country, plentiful country, to eat its fruit and its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land. And you made my heritage an abomination. The priest said not. Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The rulers also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied for Baal. And walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore I yet bleed with you, saith the Lord. And with your children's children will I plead. Even if you die. Your children, I will bleed with them. Is that the Bible? Yes. For, for pass over the ghost of Kittim, and see and send unto Gada, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Has a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory, for that which doth not profit. Be appalled, all ye heavens, that is, be astonished. And these, be horrible afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. You know that someone read that and preached a message called the broken cistern. Putting the scriptures of Israel to you. And we've read from the beginning of chapter 1, it is talking about Israel. But someone just take a little scripture in between and say my message this morning is broken systems. And condemns every Christian. And then he says he has got the living water. Look at why they are not contextual in their preaching. They take a little scripture and build a doctrine on it. What is the subject matter of Jeremiah chapter 2? The love of their youth in the wilderness. Amen. 
throwing all the way, but someone picks that and builds a subject on that. That's not the kind of a Christian I want to be. I want the flowing truth from a scripture falling, flowing down all the way. Amen. Isaiah chapter 62. Verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her righteousness go forth as brightness, and her salvation as a lamp that burneth. That lamp that is in the, the lamp that is spoken there is seven golden candlesticks. Because the lamp that God is talking about is not one like you're imagining in your house. The lamp that is saying the Israel shall be a lamb is the seven golden. That's why I say Israel is the light and the lamb of the nations. A light. You are like a city. What did the disciples? In Matthew chapter 5, you are a city on a hill that cannot be hid. You cannot light a lamb, a candle, and put it under a bushel. Right? Israel was the lamb. The seven lights that we find in the book of Revelation, let me say it, has nothing to do with the Gentiles. Here is the reason. Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah sees two olive trees. And these two olive trees are called witnesses. Amen. In the book of Revelation 11, the two candlesticks is Moses and Elijah. And he saw one candlestick this side, another candlestick this side, and in between the seven golden candlesticks. You didn't get that. <laughs> He sees an olive tree, which he also calls a candle. He sees an olive tree, which he calls the two witnesses. And then he sees a golden pipe with golden oil going into a bowl down there. And then it trans it's being transferred into the seven candlesticks that are standing. And then this is Elijah, this is Moses. And the candlesticks are in between. So the question is, how do these candlesticks in the book of Revelation get their oil? <laughs> you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. The candlestick in the book of Revelation in chapter 2 and chapter 3 does not talk about how they get their, their oil. But when you go to Zechariah chapter 4 is now where they get their oil. And it's from the two witnesses. If the two witnesses is Moses and Elijah. Did you get your Holy Spirit from Moses and Elijah? Who get the Holy who get the oil from the two candles from the two olive trees? Israel. Amen. How can you separate the candlesticks from the two olive trees? Amen. Why don't you ask a question? Just ask the question that's coming. You know, sometimes you are in the receiving, you are not dealing with the question. I've got so much here. Even my time, one hour is already done. Look here. The candlesticks when they were spoken of is in Exodus chapter 25. And I told you the other time, when you talk about a truth in the Bible, you must maintain what we call first mention principle. Where the candlesticks were mentioned is when God took Moses to the mountain and told him, make it according to the pattern you saw. And Moses made seven candlesticks. Amen? Amen. When they are coming out of Babylon in Zechariah chapter 4. Is it chapter 4? Yeah? Moses, uh, Zechariah is seeing something. Can we read it together? I'm not, even, I'm not even dealing with my notes anymore. And the angel who talked with me again, came again and walked, waked me up as a man that is awakened out of his sleep. And said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a lampstand, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it. 
and it is seven lambs on it, and seven pipes to the seven lambs which are upon the top of it, and two olive trees by it, and one upon the right side of the bowl, and another one on the left side of the bowl. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked to me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these are? I said, No, my Lord. And then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word unto the Lord, unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my, my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen? Amen? Are you seeing the two? Yes. Okay, let, can we jump? Verse 11. Then said I, and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the lampstand and upon the left side of it. So where are the two olive trees? Where? On the right and on the left. In the book of Exodus, do we have that? No, we don't have those two. We only have the two lampstands. But now the truth has developed. Something has been added to this place which you cannot take it and put it to the Gentiles. Amen? Amen? And then he says, What are these two olive branches which thou, through the two golden pipes, empty the golden oil out of themselves? The two olive trees have got a golden pipe. And they are the one that have got the oil. And they are emptying the oil in the seven golden candlesticks or candle. So now put this in perspective. Verse 14. Then said he, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. So these are not trees. These are people. Let's go to Revelation 11. Someone writes to me and asks me, says, he says, it is too late for you to have left the message. When I write all the stuff and send to him, he has blocked me. Scared. <laughs> By the way, some of these words are the most useless people I've come across. He asks you a question, he doesn't know you know the Bible. When you give him this, give him this, give him this, say, answer scripturally, he has blocked you. And then he says so and so he's disappointed. I say they are disappointed with me because I'm preaching the scriptures and not the quotes. The way I'm disappointed with the Branham lying to us. Amen. Revelation 11 verse 3 and I'll give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three scores clothed in sackcloth. That is three and a half years. These are the two olive trees and the two lambs stand standing before the God of the earth. So, <laughs> how does the golden candlesticks or lambs get their oil? Someone answer me back. From the two? When shall the two olive trees come to the earth? In the tribulation. Will you be here? Do you see what the candlesticks is not you? The two trees shall prophesy. These are men. Amen. The two olive trees shall be killed. These are men. Amen. The two olive trees shall be clothed in sackcloth. These are men. Amen. The two olive trees shall ascend in the cloud. These are men. Amen. The two olive trees will change the water into blood. These are men. Amen. The two olive trees shall smite the earth with a the blood. These are men. The two olive trees shall smite the earth with a drought. These are men. And they have oil. And they all they empty in the candlestick. William Branham, tell me how I got my Holy Ghost. Did you get the Holy Ghost through the candlesticks? Did you get the Holy Ghost through the two olive trees? How did you get the Holy Spirit? Ephesians 1. After you believe the gospel of your salvation, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of your salvation, until the purchased possession, whereby I pray that you receive the spirit 
of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That you may know the purpose of his calling among the Gentiles. How did you receive the Holy Ghost? Did you receive the Holy Ghost through the card and candlesticks? Say amen. Amen. Unless these two olive trees, is not the people are going to prophesy. Whom are they going to prophesy to? Israel. Israel. Are they going to sell 144? Are these people going to pray and the is 144 will be saved? Yes. Will the 144 receive the Holy Ghost? Yes. Will these guys empty the Holy Spirit yes. through the corn and pipe yes. into the candlesticks? Yes. Will Israel again now be the light of the nations? Yes. Will the light of the nation not be hid? Will it be seen? Amen. Know your promise, man. I have not even come to it, but you've already seen here. These guys are coming because they have got oil. And then you tell me Martin Luther had oil. And then you tell me Martin Luther had oil. Let me tell you. You know this message, I'm making more enemies again. Anytime I stood here, I make more enemies. Anytime I stood here, I make more enemies. I don't care. Today, maybe I'll make two or three, even a thousand. But I don't care. I'm telling you, the one, the Holy Ghost, that is going to come to 144,000, it will come after Jesus has sent my two witnesses. Amen. And the two witnesses have got a pipe, Amen. golden pipe, yes. with the golden oil, yes. coming so that they can rise and light up again. Come on, you Amen. 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 You realize some things you can say, but you cannot give a scripture for it. When you come and say he's the bride, and then you come and say, Ephesus church age, the messenger was Paul. The question I want to ask you is, if the messenger of Ephesus church age was Paul, I want to see the church of Ephesian what the Bible say about the church of Ephesians and what the Bible say about the church of Ephesus in Revelation. I want to compare them to find them if they are the same. Amen. The church in Ephesians is perfect. Yes. The church in Ephesians is accepted in the beloved. Amen. The church in Ephesians is chosen in him. Amen. The church in Ephesians is complete in him. Amen. The church in Ephesians has got a fivefold ministry. Amen. But the church in Ephesus, they have forgotten their first love. How can they be the same? Amen. Ephesians here was a mature church. That Paul revealed the mystery that was not hid. But the Ephesus in the book of Revelation, they are waiting for the mystery of God to be finished by the seventh angel. Amen. But this one is perfect. The love of God. And they even told in the book of Ephesians, comprehend with the saints Amen. the height, the depth, the breadth of the love of God. Amen. But the Ephesians are told you've forgotten your first love. The same people? No. Let's go some time we're going to in an Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible is becoming more sweeter than any other time I've ever known in my life. Because I'm going to the scriptures one by one. Then Israel is supposed to be chastised. Can you just allow me to preach this message? Amen. The sermon I have, can I preach it, John? Amen. The marriage covenant. Then they left God. So I want us to deal with, number one, what you are finding out, Israel in the wilderness, where it all began. The wilderness was a stage of love. A place of espousal. That's why we are reading. Who is he that is leaning in the bosom of, of her? Of her beloved. That when you are coming out of the wilderness, the woman is seen. A friend of mine was telling me when he left the message, of William Branham, he couldn't do anything for three months. He could just put his head in the bosom of the wife 
and the wife would just rub and never tell him anything. Just rub his head because he was a depressed man. There are some other people who should lie to you. There are others when they lie to you, you get defeated. This woman here is seen. Oh God. God comes and reasons with, with us in our language that we can understand. Who is she that is coming in the bosom of her? God. They're coming from where? The wilderness is where the love began. And when God read to them the covenant, they said, I do. Amen. 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 When Moses read to them the covenant, 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 and he said, if you will obey me, forsake all others, Amen. and you will cling to me, you will be a treasure in the whole earth. You will be unto me a kingdom of priests. Amen. And then they're down there they say, yes, we do. And then God loved this woman and provided for her. But when she used everything that God gave her, the Bible says she started now going looking for other men. She sinned with Assyrian. She sinned with Egyptian. She did, the Bible says she committed adultery with stones and wood, with Baal and everything. But God said, return. And then God said, I'm going to make another covenant. And the first covenant was a marriage covenant. Then he said, I'm going to make another covenant with you. It will be strong. Amen. Because in this covenant, the laws will not be written outside. Amen. It will be inside of you. Amen. In this covenant, you will be born again. Amen. In this covenant, you will never be forsaken again. Amen. Amen. Because thy creator is thy husband. Amen. I am Israel. I am married to you. Exodus 19 verse 6, I'm just referring. And it shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Thou shalt say unto him, that is Exodus 7 16. The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Serve God where? When Moses went to Pharaoh, he told Pharaoh, let my people go that I may have time with them in the wilderness. Amen. Is that true? Amen. Exodus 8, 27. We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice the Lord our God and he shall, com and he shall command us. Now, we human beings didn't know the purpose of the wilderness. Now God is telling us the wilderness was the place of the first love for Israel. Amen. And some people didn't know the purpose of the wilderness. Those guys are found in Exodus 14, verse 11 and 12. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us out to die in the wilderness? He never brought them to the wilderness to die. He told you the wilderness to get your first love, God himself. Amen. That was the purpose of the wilderness. Amen. Say amen, believers. Amen. 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 Ah, give him a hand clap, amen. amen. Their relationship, their ups and down, when Israel fell, God took an initiative to bring them back to himself. When Paul comes and says in the book of Corinthians, a believing wife sanctifies Unbelieving husbands. No. Unbelieving, a believing husband sanctifies an unbelieving wife, or else your children would not be holy, but now they are. The sanctification of the husband sanctifying the wife affects the children. Amen. Amen. And when God sanctified through Hosea, sanctified the wife it affected the two children that were born in hudum lo ami became ami 
Lo Ruhama became Ruhama because Hosea has taken upon himself to take his wife and sanctify her. Amen. Amen. What was Hosea talking about? I want you to find out. Someone open for me Isaiah chapter 1, another one Hosea chapter 1. I want you to realize they prophesied to the same people, same kings around the same time. Then yourself, you'll tell me if the statement that says God has not sent two major prophets at the same time, if that statement is still true, unless it's self exaltation. If someone there, Onesimus. Hosea chapter 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beiri. Yes. In the days of Zion. Uh -huh. Jotham, Ahaz, and Ezekiah. Uh -huh. King of Judah. Yes. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Hosea yeah. prophesied under how many kings? Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Ezekiah. And you know some of the king lived for 20 years, other ruled for 10. But this man was the prophet at that time. This is the time when Israel fell. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah 1. Yes, read. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in the days of Uzziah, mm -hmm. Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Yes, the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which is so concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Are you seeing Hosea and Isaiah prophesy at the same time? Yes. If they prophesy at the same time, what was the message? Read for us Hosea. The, the, beginning of the beginning of the word. Go ahead. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea. The Lord said to Hosea. Go, take unto thee a wife of Hudum. Why are you going to take the wife of Hudum? Go ahead. And children of Hudum. Mm -hmm. For the land has committed a great Hudum mm -hmm. departing from the Lord. The land has committed great Hudum departing from the Lord. So then this time it's what has what has committed Hudum is the land. In, in Jeremiah, it is Jerusalem. In Ezekiel, it is Israel. Is it the same person? Yes. It is called the land. It is called Jerusalem. It is called what? Israel. Let's go to Isaiah 50, 62. You love the Bible? Amen. Don't move away from, uh, do not move away from Hosea. I want us to stay with Hosea. I want us to stay with Hosea for some time. So the land has done what? Committed hudum. Which land? The land that God says it's mine. The way the land was of God is the way Israel belonged to God. You cannot separate Israel from the land. Amen? I'm reading here as you're holding. The same scripture you're reading is Isaiah 62. We didn't finish it. Verse 2. The gender shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. Thou shalt be called by a new name. Which the mouth of the Lord shall name. You guys when you come in he has given me a new name. First of all when you read the book of Revelation go get the keys from the Old Testament to unlock the book of Revelation. Amen. Don't come around now saying William Branham is a new name. Branham never said that. But the followers said it is a new name. Now there is one in South Africa. One in South Africa who says on the 23rd of October 2023, the rapture will take place. We shall watch them. And then he says his name, he's called Elohim. And he's now called King Jehovah. A message believer. 
and he's saying on 23rd of October, 2023, the rapture will take place because 23rd of October is when Branham married Meda. Spiritualism. Idol worship. And he says 23rd is a great number. Let me read this scripture for you here. Receiving the new name. It was his right to be called by a new name. Thou shalt be a crown of glory in the land of the hand of the Lord. A royal diadem in the hand, the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee and thy land shall be married. Who is getting married? In the book of Revelation, who is getting married? Jerusalem. Who is the wife of God? Jerusalem. The land. Israel. Where are you? Are we together? The land shall no longer be called desolate. But it shall be called Hephzibah. Which means my delight is in her. And your land shall be called Beulah. Beulah means married. That is a promise in the book of Isaiah. 62. After God has already punished them until there is no place to punish. I want to give you a scripture where God punished them until from their head to their toe. There was no place for God to weep until he said, what can I do anymore? But now to root you from the land so that the land can enjoy her Sabbath. Listen to me. Can you read for us, Hosea? For the land had committed great wounds. That's why he's marrying this woman. Departing from the Lord. So he went and took Goma, the daughter of Diblaim. He took Goma, the daughter of Diblaim? Which conceived and bare him a son. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. Call his name Jezreel. Call the son Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. Yes. And will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. I will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. Israel. And I want you to realize during this time, Israel is now divided into two. There is the southern kingdom called Judah and the northern kingdom called Is called what? Israel. And God is going to say in the book of Hosea, Israel is not my people. I will have no mercy upon Israel, but I'll have mercy upon Judah. Because Judah was the only one remaining. But the Bible says, you are sister after you committed Hallowed tree, your sister followed you also. So we have got Judah and Israel as hallows. They have left. Isaiah chapter 1, just, just there. Isaiah chapter 1. Hear all ye heaven and give ear. Verse 2. O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have now reached and brought up children and have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his master, and the ass his master's grip. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel. And to anger, they go away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? Will you revolt more and more? The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. For the sole of thy foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, or there is no health, but wounds and bruises and the putrefying sores. They have not closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land foreigners devour it in your presence, and it is desolate and as overthrown by foreigners. And the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a log in the garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant, we should have been like Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Look at the chastisement of God on Israel. It says from the head to the toe, it is only wounds. Because God was chastising them. Read Hosea. 
as I'm going to Levi as I go to Leviticus 26. And she conceived again. She conceived again. And bare a daughter. Yes. And God said unto him. And God said unto him. Call her name Loruhama. Call her the name Loruhama. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. I will not have no mercy upon the house of Israel. Israel. Uh -huh. But I will utterly take them away. Uh -huh. But I will have mercy upon the house of Israel. Are you seeing now there is a group here that is receiving mercy, another one not receiving mercy? Because the ten tribes were the first one to be taken out of the land. And Israel and Judah followed. And then God had no wife at all. And I will save them by the Lord. I will save them by the Lord their God. Yes. And I will not save them by, by bow nor by sword. Amen. By battle. By horses, not by horses. Let me read now. Now when she had queen Loruhama, she conceived and bore a son. Then said God, call his name Loamai. Lo for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Amen? Amen? Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured, nor numbered. It shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, they shall be unto me, they shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. I want to tell you something that happened between the Jews and the Samaritan. There was a really great hatred between them. But that is the place in Samaria, in Galilee, where Jesus lived for 28 years. He went to the people for second, hated by the Jews, which is called the Southern Tribe. There was no dealing among them. Yet the Samaritan are the ten tribes. Samaritan was detestable. They were hated. Because Samaritan, which was how Zimri, Omri, Ahab, and the rest, went out, joined themselves with Assyrian, and fought Judah. There was enmity. Then Solomon took 20 cities and gave to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria said, there's nothing good here. He called it Kabul, C-A-B-U-L. Kabul means senseless, not good. So the people were hated. And that thing existed when the Lord Jesus Christ was on the earth. That's how when he found the woman at the well, the woman tells him, you are a Jew, what relationship do I have with you? Because they couldn't talk to one another. But Jesus lived in Galilee. Galilee were the people that were the lowest. Where Nazareth was. That region where Christ grew up after being born in Bethlehem and going to Egypt, then coming back to live in Galilee. It is the lowly people. That's what the Bible says. Aren't these Galileans? There was nothing. But Jesus went and identified with the people for a second. <laughs> Hallelujah. People were trodden down. He went and lived among them. When he came out, he was seeking those who were lost. That's why he went to the Gentiles. Amen. I'm not talking about the Gentiles, you. I'm reading the book of Matthew. He went and lived in Galilee that it must be, might be fulfilled. That, that was written by the prophet saying, the land of Zebulun, the Galilee of the Gentiles, because they were mixed among them. He went and lived there. He didn't go there to preach to them. He went there because that is where Samaritan was. The law people, amen. amen. And God says, I loved Judah. But Judah forsook God. God has, is now without a wife. Who is the woman in the book of Revelation? He's God bringing back his people. Amen. But before he brings them, there is another people much closer to him. Amen. It's called the body of Christ. Amen. Brought about by the mystery of Christ. Amen. Not the mystery of God. Amen. Is that too much? It's not too much. We are here to bring it out. Amen. These are the people God says now going to chastise them. And God prepared five courses of chastisement to Israel. And the last one, they would be uprooted from the land. 
Leviticus chapter 26. Write it down. Leviticus 26 has five causes of chastisement to Israel. And every course, I want to refer because I have no time to read. Every course had a prophet that came during that time. Hallelujah. So when you come with a prophet, tell me which cause is this prophet and what chastisement is he coming for? Hallelujah. Amen. Have you wrote it down? You, your brother just want you to hold us here. You know there are a lot of things that have been said and you know we shall go up in heaven. And after going up to heaven we shall stay for three and a half years. And then we shall come in Revelation 18 riding on horses. Are you ready? I prove to you that that is not you. By the scriptures. That we are going to the marriage supper. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 verse 29. After 28 he said what? Put that one down. If I forget, someone remind me to go to it. Matthew 26, 28. He took his cup and said, this is the blood of my new testament. So the very testament God promised in Jeremiah, it is now by his blood. Not the blood of bulls that ratified the first covenant in Exodus chapter 24. Exodus 19, a marriage. 24, blood sealed it. But now, hallelujah, God promised another time. What will he do? He will make another covenant. That covenant has nothing to do with you. You are not there when God promised. He said he's promising the house of Judah and the house of Israel. A new covenant. He's strengthening his marriage relationship. Amen. That's why he's going for the new covenant. Amen. Amen. Then he said, can someone read for us that scripture? Because I have many scriptures I have here with me. Matthew, or write it down, Matthew 28, not 28, it's 26. 26? 28, what does it say? For this is my blood of the New Testament. For this is the blood of my, the New Testament. Which is shed for many mm -hmm. in remission of sin. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, mm. I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Did you know, do you see why it is going to be drunk? In the Father's kingdom. Are you a kingdom people? No. Is what is called the marriage supper? Three and a half years for you in the sky? No. Say and no, like you know what, I'm talking, what you're talking about. No. He takes the blood, which is the wine, and he drinks it. Before that he says, I've really longed to take of this. I've really longed. And this is the blood of my testament. Then he says, I will not partake of it anymore. You know, someone is asking, but why does Paul say, when we eat and partake of do, we do remember the Lord's until he come. That is not what Jesus was talking about. We are partaking of this because the death of Jesus did two things. One, to ratify and confirm the second covenant. That is to Israel. Amen. But what did it do to you? It was your atonement. Amen. Same blood. Amen. For them it was the blood of the co covenant. For you it is the blood under which you receive your forgiveness. The Holy Spirit for them in the day of Pentecost was to write the new law. But the Holy Spirit for you was the promise after you believed the gospel of your salvation. Amen. For you, you became the epistle. For them, they became the new covenant on their hearts. Do you understand? Amen. Did the Holy Spirit come to write something in the day of Pentecost? Yes. What was he writing? The New Testament. Because God promised to write them where? On their hearts. Was it 50 days after the lamb was slain? Yes. Was the Mount Sinai 50 days after they left Egypt? Yes. Do they celebrate the day of Pentecost because of the coming down of the law, even in Israel today? Yes. 
So Pentecost is the coming down of the law. Yes. Amen. On Mount Sinai. Amen. And in, in the book of Pen in the book of Acts, chapter 2, something came down. The life of God. Something was written. Amen. They were all in Jesus, but not in the body of Jesus. The body of Jesus is you. Amen. They are both unions. Praise the Lord. Amen. What did he say? You know, I'm seeing there's a lot of things. You know what you're fighting with? And even people on the number they're fighting with. They're fighting with the way they were taught. I understand. To be in the message for 30, 40 years. Feeding on the tapes. Feeding on the lies. To be washed will take a time. Some people are getting washed early. Others are not. Others are going on. We shall tire until you get washed out of that nonsense. Amen. Because it's now, you know, you are not fighting with anything, you know. You are fighting with what you are told. Is it true? Yeah. You are told three and a half years and no one told you there is the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. Because if he told you that, you would also ask him a question. Matthew 26, 29, he says, 28, I will not partake of this fruit again until with you again anew in my father's kingdom. The same people are given prayer to pray for the kingdom. People are called the children of the kingdom are the people to eat of that supper. And that supper and the son of a king had a wedding. The Bible says that. Amen. And when the people came in that, they came, one of them was found, he didn't have a garment, but he had entered the place of a wedding. So if that is heaven, if that will be in the sky, you want to tell me someone will go up to the sky and then it's thrown out. What is the power that took him from the earth up to the sky? <laughs> that when the king came in the marriage, he found one man did not have a garment. Eh? And then he asked him, how did you, my friend, how did you get here? And then he was told, he was bound, thrown out in the dark which means the marriage was taking place in the now. Is the scripture saying the same thing? Amen. So if you think that was a marriage, because a marriage is supposed to take place in the sky, then someone tried. Let me be sarcastic here. He had received the seven thunders, which gave him the rapturing faith. And he had received the dynamics that took him from the earth. He had received the refilling of the Holy Ghost. He had received the new name. He had believed the message of Malachi 4. Then he went up to heaven. After going to heaven, they discovered he doesn't have a garment. Then he was now thrown in the outer darkness. He was not thrown down, but he was thrown in the outer darkness. Meaning the marriage is where? Here. And it's in the night. Amen. Not for the children of the night. Amen. 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 I can, until you wonder, why did I believe the message of William Branham to begin with? I would be a better Christian today. But I wouldn't have loved the Bible the way I do Amen. if I wasn't a Branham to begin with. Amen. I believe that nowadays, if he says something, I divide it. Amen. He comes and tells you, I can't avoid these things. When you want to avoid it, someone calls you and say, for the first time I saw it. They say, we wanted to move forward. They say, no, 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 tell us. Because some of us are scared. Then he says, Israel will make a covenant of money between Israel and the beast. He's calling it a covenant of money. Is Israel looking for money? Who are the people who own the riches of this world? So you are saying it's going to be a covenant of many when the Bible says very clearly they are looking forward for a covenant that God promised them. Now don't sleep on me. They are looking forward for a covenant. And the man who is going to deceive them can never be a Gentile. He's going to be among them. He's going to be a person among them. Because a Gentile can never deceive a Jew. When they ask you whose child are you? And then you tell him I'm the son of Sherabuha. 
and you tell him I'm a son of a rap mongon, keep kanyilat. He will tell you, come on, those are tribes in Kenya. Which tribe are you? You say I'm uh, I'm Ngugi. or I'm a war, I'm Oronyango, or Oliveira. If you are a Portuguese, but he say, my friend, can you declare your pedigree? Amen. Number one. For them to be deceived by the Antichrist, he must be Jewish. We only thought he's the, with the... That is what that man told you. But I'm telling you, how can he be... Can I give another scripture? The scripture says in the book of Daniel, you can check it out. It says this. And that prince... Did you hear me? Shall speak great words, I'm paraphrasing. And shall forsake the God of his fathers. How can he be a gentle and go forsake the God of his fathers? My God. Why are you looking at me? You're like shocked. The Antichrist promised in the book of Daniel, he will first of all forsake the God of his fathers. Who are the people that had got a God of their father? Jews. Now you people, you want me to read. Praise the Lord. 11.34 36. And the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. Are you saying that is the Antichrist? And he shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. And he shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. Oh God. Until this time of jam. Listen to me. And if this time is finished, he will be the one ruling. Amen. And that is the last week of the 70th week. This will be the man here. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and he shall speak marvelous things against God of gods, and he shall tell, he shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that is the time it shall be done. Neither shall he regard the Capital G. Or D of his fathers. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Nor, des nor the desire of women. Nor regard any God. He shall magnify himself above all. Is in the same man Paul is talking about in the book of Thessalonians? Who shall exalt himself above God? And but in his stead shall be. And but in his stead shall he honor the God of forces. And the God of whom his father knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Do you see that is not a Gentile? Amen. This is the type of God Amen. that shall be worshipped. There will be harlotry again in the land of Israel. Praise the Lord. Go on to the book of Hosea. We have to drop these things. When we come to collect them, you know what you are talking about. Say ye unto your brethren, army, and to your sisters who hammer, and to your sisters who hammer. Oh, oh, can you read it properly? Read so that it also shows that verse 8, there was a son born called Ami, and verse 6, there was a, 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 a lady born called Roruhama. So that chapter 2 verse 2 says, Say unto your brethren, Am I? And to your sisters, Ruhama. Something has happened. Say unto your brethren, Am I? And to your sisters, Ruhama. Yes. Plead with your mother. Yes. Plead. Yeah. For she is not my wife. Yes. Neither am I her husband. Yes. Let her therefore put away her wounds out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Yes. And I strip her naked and set her as set her as in the day that she was born, and make her as a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children, 
for they be the children of Udums. For their mother had played the harlot. She that conceived them had done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up. Now let us see what God is now going to do. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy wall with thorns. And make wall, and she shall not find her path. She shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. She, she shall seek them, but she shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then was it better with me than now. Amen. That's the restoration of Israel. And God has made sure there is no Syrian on our side. And God, oh hallelujah. He is now pulling her, making sure she cannot. Brother, if I tell you you get saved, never to get lost. Can you now believe from this? Amen. If the new covenant, if the new covenant, she will want to go out, nothing. And the Bible says you will put even thorns, nothing. What about you, the body of Christ? What can separate us from the love of God? Should we continue sinning that sin may abound? How can we sin after we are already dead? Because Paul says a dead man does not commit sin. How do you take your salvation like something you get today, tomorrow you can lose? And your salvation depends on a certain pastor or a certain church. If God limited my salvation to that church, or to this pastor called Simon Shiveka, then that is not God with good plans. If all these people must come here, then that's not a good God. But let God allow a portion of these people come here Amen. and others go elsewhere. Amen. That is a God of a good plan. Amen. But a God who must believe in your church, uh, a God who has got people believing in your pastor and your church to be the people of God, that's not a good God. Amen. That's a God who doesn't plan things well. But my God has scattered the body of Christ around the world. Amen. We are not the one preaching it. The other people preaching too. God bless you wherever you are. Amen. And I'm not telling you nonsense that if you believe that they, they, they like, like they do in Nairobi. Someone preaching and telling people, if you don't believe William Branham, you can't go to heaven. You idol worshiper. And then you are standing on the pulpit. You are standing on the pulpit believing William Branham. Show me a place where the Bible says believe William Branham. I will show you a place. He that believeth in him has eternal life. And has passed from death into life. Amen. Show me a place where you have to believe in Simon Shiveka. I will show you a place where you have to believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. If I tell you we are the only church, I will be lying to you. Yes. But you have a right to use your church. My, I've chosen this one for myself. Amen. I want to sit down and hear the word of God. Amen. I want to sit down and hear the body of Christ is perfect. Amen. I want to sit down to hear the coming of the Lord, the second coming and the rapture coming are different. Amen. 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 If God would do that to a woman, Amen. a woman that was a hallowed, oh, he has called her back home Amen. and after calling her back home, she also in a way desires to go. And then she's saying, I'm going to use the same route I used. When she goes there, she found thorns. When she gets there, God blinds her. When she gets there, she's wondering now where. And then she says, I'll go back to my husband. If God will do that to Israel, how can you be lost after you've gotten saved? Amen. Amen. If God, let me say this. You know, I'm quiet. I'm seeing how I can't finish. And it's true I will surrender. <laughs> That's the reason I stopped. If God loved the people, he said when he found Israel, she was not even salted. Then he cut off the umbilical cord, put salt there, washed her. Then her hair grew, gave her bracelet, gave her the earring, uh, the nose ring, the earring, clothed her. And he said he, when he passed, it was in the time of love. Amen. And then he said I entered into a covenant with her. And then she became mine. And when she leaves he says, return backsliding Israel. 
Return and I will heal your backsliding. And then he says, show me the bill of divorcement. It is not me who divorced her. It is a sin. But return. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If God would do that to a woman that has hurt her, every man should stand and say, did I love her right? Amen. If God would do that, he say, she took even the food he gave her. Gave it to her lovers. In the book of Ezekiel, he says, prostitute are given gifts. But for you, you give, give people gifts to lie with you. And he said, there is no such a thing. That a prostitute is only giving gifts. That is what Israel was. But God wanted to show how powerful his love is. Amen. The reason why he's bringing her back. As a pure bride in the book of Revelation, let us rejoice and be glad for the marriage of the Lamb has come. Amen. If God would do that to a woman. Amen. When someone comes and tells you, you've, you've crossed the line of mercy, he doesn't know the love of God for Israel, number one. Amen. If he would know, he would say, if God would do this with Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. If God would do that, every backslider, I'm using that word that Paul never used. Every weak person, come back to the Lord. Amen. Every person that got so disappointed because you got cheated and deceived the I was, come back to the Lord. Amen. Every man listening to me today, if you see what God had to deal with with his wife, come back to your wife Amen. and say, I'm sorry. Amen. You are not represented anywhere. If you say she blasphemed, she went. She did this, she went. If you see what God had to deal with, you are supposed to wake up from your seat and send out a man like God sent Jeremiah. Jeremiah and Isaiah, Hosea and Amos, Ezekiel and Joel were to who Israel bring her back to her first love. Amen. That's why we have what you call the writing prophets. Writing prophet beginning from Isaiah. It begins a different time in Israel. Prophet sent out to bring Israel back to God. Amen. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. These are major prophets. Then we have got a day 12 or 9 minor prophets. All of them is about the return of Israel. Even Amos comes and says, you are the only family on earth that I knew. That's a man. Amos chapter 5. Right there. He said you are the only family I knew. This is a man who has no more family. But thank God there is another family. The family in heaven. Amen. Is called Jesus. Amen. The family on earth. Is called Jesus. Amen. He had trouble with the family on earth. May he never have trouble with the family in heaven. Amen. Because of the greatness of the mystery that he revealed to Paul. We are telling him. By your grace, you have saved us. Amen. Not by words, you are saved. Amen. It is the gift of God. Amen. Then someone comes and says, you know, Branham told us we can divorce our wives and marry. I want to tell you, if he ever told you that, sometimes he never even told you. Sometimes you just have a problem you don't want to fix. Although he preached marriage and divorce and he preached polygamy, he said then polygamy was allowed. In fact, before he said it, he said, this will shock you. And I'm still shocked, Branham. He said, this will shock you. Then polygamy was allowed in all. Then his daughter came and asked him, I'm not going to get married, told him. Then he said, why? He said, because you, you legalized polygamy. Then he came and said, no, I was talking about animals. Then he can call you any kind of a thing. <laughs> why did he go to Africa, to Sahara? To get Serengeti and Masai Mara and to preach to animals. Why is he bringing the people and saying he's preaching to animals? And that's why homes have broken because of this message. Children have not gone to school. Wives have been told to resign from their work because of this message. Children have been pulled out of college if they're in college. And they've been told to go and learn what? Tailoring. Women have been told not even to put on the underwears. In this, this, this message. Amen. What happened with God and his wife? 
I will restore, say the Lord. Amen. So what is the best group? I want to tell you, sister, even if you got saved, we have got three children from three different fathers. So what? I'm saved by grace. Amen. Amen. You people will charge you and say, you, you cannot go to heaven, you cannot go in the rapture because you had three more children. I don't care, man. I care. Grace. Amen. Abounding grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't look at who you are. Look at what he is. He is the savior of the world. Amen. Amen. I don't care who you are. Someone comes and tells you can be forgiven and not justified. Then some of those innocent sisters that something happened to them and then they came back. They are told to stand before the church. And people are asking them stupid question. How many, uh, how many days, how many times did you sleep with this man for you to get pregnant? I'm asking you stupid man. How many times is a man supposed to sleep with a woman for her to conceive? Sin is sin. Whether it was a thousand times or one time it is sin. And God forgives. Amen. Amen. Stand there. Demoralize this, this girl. Until, and then you expect the same people in the church to marry her. I'm telling you, in this body of Christ that is all over the world, there is no Gentile. Amen. There is no Jew, Amen. but the body of Christ. Amen. Give me 30 minutes. Give me that minute to finish this up, okay? Amen. Therefore, behold, I will hedge her up with the thorns and make wall that she will not find her path. Then she shall follow after her lovers. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. She shall seek them, but not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. For them, then was it better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her grain and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Therefore will I return and take away my grain in, in, in its time and my wine in its season. And I will recover my wool and my flax given to, to cover her nakedness. And I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and none shall deliver out of mine hand. And I will cause all her myths to seize her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbath, and her solemn days. Let's go to verse 14. I will judge her for the days of Balim, unto which she burned incense, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers and forgot me, saith the Lord. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will lure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly unto her. Amen. Lure her where? Your Bible says comfortably, right? Mm -hmm. It is soaking gems here. It is still coffee I'm using. I know you're using the same one. It says, I'll speak comfortably to her. And give her vineyards there and the valley of Acre for a door of hope. And he shall sing there as in the days of her youth and in the day when she came out, up out of the land of Egypt. She's coming back. Amen. Behold, remember Mount Horeb. Amen. I'll send you like the prophet, Amen. the friend of the bridegroom. Amen. Israel is going back to her youth. Amen. Israel is going back to her love. Amen. And God is going back to his first love. Amen. Let us rejoice for the marriage of the Lamb has come. It is the time she's going back to her youth. She shall sing it there. Amen. And it shall be that that day saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shall not call me no more Baalai. Ishai or Ishai means my husband. Balai means my Lord. For I will take away the names of Balim out of her mouth and they shall no more be remembered by their name. In that day I will make a covenant 
For with them, with the beast of the field, and with the force of the heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword, and the battle of the earth, and I will make them to lie down safely. Is that the millennium? Is that the millennium? Amen. Amen. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness, and in justice, and in loving kindness, and in mercies. I even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. And shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, and I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the grain, and the wine, and the oil, and shall hear Jezreel. I will sow unto me, I will sow unto me in earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them who are not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. Then let us rejoice. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. Amen. It is not you. Amen. Amen. It is Israel. Amen. That's why John comes. I want to finish somewhere here. I told you to write down Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26, the first chastisement. Can someone read for me? Leviticus 26, verse 14. Leviticus 26, 14. Yeah. But if ye will not hearken unto me. Yes, if you not hearken unto me. And I will not do all these commandments. I will not do this commandment. And if ye shall not despise my statutes. Yes. And if ye shall despise my statutes. Yes. Or if your soul abhor my judgment. Yes. So that you will not do all my commandments. You will not do my commandments. What will happen? Mm -hmm. my covenant. Mm -hmm. I also will do this unto you. Yes. Even I will appoint over you terror. Consumption, consumption and argue. And the burning argue mm -hmm. shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of the heart. Amen. Go ahead. And you shall sow your seed in vain. And you shall sow your seed in vain. For your enemies shall eat it. And your enemies shall eat it. When did that take place in Israel? When did they sow their seed and the enemy came and harvested? Because that was supposed to be the first chastisement the first cause of chastisement when did that happen in the book of chapter 6 is when the midnight came with the children of the east and harvested that was the first chastisement is it was it written in leviticus 26 amen can you read for us what happens again and I will set my face against you. Yes. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. You shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. Yes. And ye shall flee when none pursueth. Yes, and none pursueth. That's right. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me. Yes. Then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. God is now adding seven times more. Seven times more. Until after he has chastised them, we see Israel standing in Isaiah with wounds and bruises from the head to the toe. Five chastisements have gone to Israel until God says, if I punish you, where will I beat? Everywhere is wounds. Everywhere is wounds. And then what, what did God do? The last thing that God do was to root them out of the land. Seven, this is five causes of chastisement. The last one, the Bible says, you shall eat your own children. When did they eat their children? In the days of Elisha. Is that true? That is one of the chastisements written in Leviticus 26. The second one, they are told, God shall release the beasts in their field. Not the second one. The second one, God tells them, the rain will fail their lands. When did the rain fail? In the times of Elijah. So in the times of Elijah, they were living in the second course of chastisement. Did you get me? And I want to say this and don't forget what I'm saying. Every course had a specific prophet that came. Amen? Amen. Now, can you tell me the, the prophet of the first course? I know that's an eight and you don't read. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Gideon? Aha. The first assessment was a prophet that a name is not given. The judge was Gideon, but the prophet was given also. Why are you looking at me like that? Look at me like you're, you're saying, I'm going to read it when I go home. <laughs> Judges chapter 6, the Bible says, And God sent them a prophet before that angel came at the tree. Under the tree there was a prophet. So there was judges that came and the judges were divided into two. Praise the Lord. Amen. Deliverers and avengers. If I ask you, name for me the two names. Name for me two judges in the book of Judges. Tell me, a judge in the book of Judges? Samson, eh? We are even talking about the very one that people cannot even mention. Just name for me randomly. Gideon, right? And Samson. Those are remembered. Then for the Bible readers, they can remember Shamgar and Deborah. Huh? But the two ones, but these are two different ones. Gideon was a deliverer. Samson was an avenger. And this is what Jesus will be to them. After the book of Judges, which book follows? Ruth. In Ruth, what do we find? A kinsman redeemer, right? So we have got the, uh, the, the deliverer, the avenger, and the redeemer. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the first assignment, a prophet comes. And then they get about 80 years of rest before the second chastisement. They fall again into Ashtoreth and Baal. Amen? Amen. Then the second one, the, the, the larger must be the third one. The second one is when God divided the kingdom into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Are we together so far? In the days of Solomon toward the end of his days. He entered into Ashtoreth, Milcom, Malcolm, and all the false gods. Then what did God say? I will rend the kingdom from you. But for the sake, my servant David, I will leave you with one, two houses. Are you getting it? Amen. So, whose prophet was there at that time when this was happening? Who was the prophet of the second course? I think now you are studying the Bible, right? It was Samuel and Ahijah. Ahijah took his garment and cut it into ten pieces and gave it to Jeroboam, right? And then the two remained with Jeroboam second. That was the second cause of justicement. Then the third cause of justicement, Elijah. That was a prophet, amen? amen? When he stopped and he said, it will not rain, but my, 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 my word. Was it the word of Elijah? No, you people are wrong. It was not the word of Elijah. By my word, that was not Elijah. It was God who had spoken in Leviticus 26 and in Tony 28. I will close the heaven. The heaven above will be brass and it shall rain dust. So when Elijah said, it will not rain, but by my word, it was not Elijah as a person. It was Elijah knowing the type of chastisement at that time. And Elijah knew they have already had the first chastisement. They have already had the second course. They are now on the third course. Drought. That's only 28. You have to be biblical. Yeah? Then the fourth. Elisha. You shall eat the children that came out of your mother's womb. Two women sat together and the famine was so much. And then they say, let's boil this child and eat. Tomorrow we shall eat my child. And then the woman, when the tomorrow came, she said, no. Then this woman ran to the king. She said, and it was normal, you couldn't hide it. She said, because of the famine, we agreed. We shall eat. And then I presented my child to be eaten yesterday. But the woman has not honored the promise. God said in this chastisement, I will send beasts. In the days of Elijah. 
Did the, did, did, did the sheep bear kill 42 children? This was chastisement. They are moving on. They are moving on up to the fifth chastisement or a cause of chastisement. The fifth one is where we read verse 33. Read it. 33. And I will scatter you among the heathen. I will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath, as long as it lieth desolate, and you are and in and you are in your enemy's land, even they then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbath. That was the last one. It is so long. The fifth cause was so long. Praise the Lord. Amen. The sweetest thing is that after all this, God say, I'll speak comfortably to you. Are you seeing the fifth cause? My time is up. Praise the Lord. I will not go to the next place. But I want to say this. This is what God had to deal with. In the book of Isaiah chapter 1, he says, the more he punished her, the more evil she became. Until God looked at her and saw bruises from the head to the toe. And then he said, where will I chastise you? The only thing was now to take her out of the land and take her where? To the nation. Then that's what began what we call the times of the Gentiles. Amen? Amen? When Israel was divorced by God, even the land, there was nothing going on. Are we together so far? Amen. There was nothing going on in Israel. They have been divorced. The land is enjoying her Sabbath. And then Jeremiah came at that time and said, you will go. But for how long? 70 years. He's speaking to who? To Judah. Israel had already left. Oh God. Amen. They have gone wounded with the bruises everywhere. But verse 40. And if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespasses which they have trespassed against me and all of and that also they have walked contrary unto me, that I will also have walked contrary unto them. I have brought them into the land of their enemies, and in their uncircumcised heart, and in e if then the uncircumcised heart be humble, and then they accept the punishment of their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, also my covenant with Abraham. I will remember, and I will remember the land. Then also, shall he be left by them. The land also shall be left by them and shall enjoy her Sabbath while she lie desolate. Now when you look at these things, God is now remembering not the people. He's remembering Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Are you getting it? Amen. Our last scripture. Was just to be faithful to my time. Isaiah 40. This is during the time of the fifth chastisement. After they have gone, God is now bringing them back into the land. That the land can be married again. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Sayeth your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. And cry unto her. That her warfare is accomplished. That her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Are you seeing the message of comfort now? Amen. Is that John? Amen. Is that John? Amen. So John came with the message of comfort ye my people. Comfort ye my people. Speak comfortably to her. That was Elijah. Uh, can you think that was too much today? That was so much today. Praise the Lord. Amen. John is coming when he goes. Now from that place, this prophecy that is here. God now sent writing prophets. After writing prophets, silence 
from Malachi to Matthew chapter 3 400 years of silence God has spoken and is angry if you go to the last causes God says and I will come to you in fury the fifth cause was the judgment God in fury which can only be likened to the day of the Lord Amen. and that cause the fifth cause is the one that it is still on Amen. Amen. Because spiritually they have not returned yet until the rapture takes place. Hallelujah. Can we finish there? The fifth cause is now when a bridegroom comes. The fifth cause around that time when they have now returned in the land. That's why Daniel was repenting the sins of the father. Amen. After he repented then God came down and said no not yet. 70 weeks are now determined. When Jesus comes in Matthew 28 and tells them, I shall not leave you. I shall be with you up to the end. That end was how many years ahead? How many years? Hey, the end that Jesus was talking about in Matthew 20 was, was seven years ahead. Why are you surprised? Because the program of 2,000 years was not there at that time. Yes. Until when Paul came to bring a people that will say, stop fast. I have to do something here. Amen. When that thing is now taken into the rapture called the body of Christ, then that wedding continues. Amen. Rejoice. Amen. Let us be glad. You are the reason. I want to tell you, you stop the devil from being incarnate. Amen. I'm not comforting you. I'm Amen. quoting the Salonians. He that led us will lead until he be taken out of the way. It's not just the Holy Spirit per se. It's the Holy Spirit and the mystery of Christ in you. Amen. You stop the program of the earth because you're the program of the heaven. Give him a hand, clap, man. I, I was talking to Salem in the kitchen yesterday. I was telling, can you imagine the way you are? You stopped a great event in Israel. Amen. Do you know the reason why they saw everything they had? Because the end was only seven years ahead. Only seven years. Oh, if you have seven years, sell this house, sell the car, sell the property, come and let us live in a big tent. Because all you have, Philemon, you have, the man and his secret bring you us, Joseph bring you us. Grace and everyone, bring all your property. The time is at hand. We are moving into this for seven years. There is no time we are waiting. Then they ask Jesus, is it the time you are going to surrender? They restore the kingdom to Israel. Then Jesus said now. Then, Acts chapter 9, boom. Jesus meets a man going to Damascus. Then he sends him to bring a body now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Then that program was suspended. Amen. What is, how much time is Israel waiting for God to redeem them? How much time? Seven years. Amen. That is the only time Israel has with God. That's the only time. But for us, you've had 2,000 years. Then someone comes and says, if you tell me to choose 12 out of this generation, I'll be scared to death. Why did God delay the program of Israel if there are no 12 people in this generation? You are a mystery people. Amen. Mystery rapture people. Amen. Mystery resurrection people. Amen. People that God will never, will not give God any trouble. You are the body of his body, flesh of his flesh. You are beloved of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers, when you read Hebrews chapter 6, that if they fall back, that it will be renewed. That is not you. It is them if they fall back. You don't fall. Amen. You modify the members of your body. Amen. If you don't, you lose rewards. And when you lose reward, you lose your rank in the ages to come. Amen. You can't just say, I'm in heaven. Don't be in heaven like a civilian. Go in heaven like someone who fought. Someone who pulled the body under your subjection. Amen. Someone who say, I can't do that. I'm saved. God give me power. Amen. Amen. You can't just live like another young man. You live like a person that has Christ inside. You can't live just like a young lady. Go before God. Let God give you strength. There is a reward. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Is that true? Amen. A program that will stop that the body of Christ can come on the scene. If a man be in Christ, is a new creature. Amen. Because Paul now can tell you, do you understand why, why you don't see me on the doors of Jerusalem city? Because I had a greater work to do. Amen. To bring in a new creation. Amen. To bring in the family in heaven. Yes. To bring in our heavenly people. Amen. Where you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where powers and dominion is supposed to be known to the church. Amen. That is Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. Talks about powers and dominions. When we go to heaven where the demons had power. We take them away. We shall have princes among you. Amen. People with the dominion among you. Right there in heaven. You are casting out every reasoning. Amen. Because you have a reward coming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When John comes and lures them in the wilderness, then in the middle of that, then he says, It's the little flock. Then God suspends the program. He gives them one year. One year, they crucify Stephen. Not crucify, they kill Stephen. Romans chapter 8, uh, Romans chapter, uh, Acts chapter 8. The Holy Spirit goes to the Samaritan. Acts chapter 10. Cornelius, the gender received the Holy Ghost. Cornelius is not a part of the body of Christ. Cornelius is a proselyte, a converted Gentile, Amen. like Caleb, Amen. who got the blessings of Abraham, like Ruth, like Bathsheba, like Rahab. Like Tama, these are the Gentiles under Israel. You are not a Gentile under Israel, for your head is Christ. Amen. Israel is the head of the nations. Amen. Jesus is your head. Amen. Now, there is two people here. There is one that Jesus is the king over them. And the nation is the head of the other nation. Then there is another one. Jesus is the head and she is the body. Amen. They are not the same. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What can separate us from the love of God Amen. that is in Christ Jesus? What are you required to do? Just believe. Amen. The resurrected Jesus Christ. And then you are baptized into his body. You don't need a gate. You don't need a gate. You don't need the rod of iron. Those are the guys. Jesus will have trouble even in the millennium. Do you know that people are going to rebel in the millennium? Even people are going to die. In the millennium. It's in the Bible. I can hear that. Oh, Dan, you are saying I won't be here anyway. Yeah, that's true. You won't be here anyway. You'll be up there. Look here. These people, why should someone come with a rod of iron if they are obedient? Amen. Amen. These are the people in the Hidaji, Fimbo Yachuma. And then towards the end, they are the same ones that the devil will enter in to fight against Israel. And then they shall be destroyed. You won't be here. Amen. I want to ask you as I finish. Amen. Amen. Are you coming to fight for Israel? If you are coming to fight for Israel, then we have a right to ask God, what did you create the angels for? That you're now going to come in Revelation 19, riding on white horses to come and fight for Israel. Where are the angels? Do you know Matthew says, and Jesus will come with his all, with all his angels? Yes. Eh? Do you know that? Amen. I'm asking a question. Those angels that were surrounding Gehazi, what will be their work? Was there an army? Did an angel kill 185,000 of them? Amen. Jesus restrained himself from calling 12 legions? Will this be the time he's going to come with the legions to fight for Israel? Amen. Huh? Say amen if that's true. Amen. majabu na siwezi kueleza. Oh, siwezi kue, oh, siwezi kueleza. Ame tenda majabu na siwezi kueleza. Ame tenda 
ametenda maajabu na siwezi kuwe maajabu ni gani maajabu is not to give you your house maajabu is to save you by grace the greatest thing that ever happened in your life is the grace of the lord jesus and to take you out of this place when you want to give up in your life you realize you stopped but you might stopped jesus and jesus said who is that but you didn't stop jesus you stop the program of god you stop the program of the earth that you would come in then god said i'm not going to deal with them anymore i'm going to call you you sinner come you saints oh, i wish i knew that song and i know and i know Jesus Christ can make the vilest sinner clean and I know yes I know Jesus blood can make the vilest sinner clean really which was hard for God to restore his wife or to save you to save me for God to restore Israel is not hard but for God to save you to suspend the program for 2000 years until Israel is wondering why have you delayed we have the answer he has not delayed he has an earth, a heavenly program and here we are don't despise yourself and i know yes i know Jesus blood can make the vileness in a clean and i know yes i know Jesus blood can make the vileness in a clean oh and i know Oh yes I know Jesus blood can make the vileness sin clean and I know Oh yes I know Jesus blood can make the vileness sin clean Ame tenda majabu na siwezi kueleza oh siwezi kueleza oh siwezi kueleza ame tenda majabu na siwezi kueleza Ametenda maja Ametenda majabu na siwezi kueleza oh siwezi kueleza ah siwezi kueleza Ametenda majabu na siwezi kueleza Ametenda maja Ametenda majabu na siwezi kueleza ah siwezi kueleza ah siwezi kueleza ametenda majabu na siwezi kueleza ametenda majabu Look at yourself differently. You as a human being would not have power to stop God. But it's God's program. It was his love for you. We spend so much time talking about Israel that you can see how God loved a man and then you can tell how God loves you. That you are free today, you can accept him. 
You can move closer to him irrespective of what you've done. Whatever that has happened in your life, he has got open hands. He's coming to tell you, I will heal you. If God would heal Israel and he said, I will heal your backsliding. If God can heal backsliding, you can be healed. Whoever that is listening, watching in today. It is the love of God showing you, you are a candidate of a high heaven. There is nothing you've done. There is nothing you did. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are a lover. Amen. The Bible say, for God so loved the world that he gave. One story shall remain and it shall be the story of love. How you loved Israel and how you loved me, the sinner. The whole thing is about love. It's about the love of God. When the, Bible, when the singer sang and said, the love of God is greater far. What else could such a man say, Lord? While we were sinners, you loved us. Father, because it was all about you. Serving Israel is all about you. Serving us is all about you. Restoring Israel is about you. Preserving us is all about you. It's not about anything good that we've done. Father, serving the people today is all about you. It's not about anything else. Oh God, it's about your love for your people, Lord. Oh Father, we thank you today. We want to say, Father, we appreciate you. We just want to say we thank you, Lord. How you battle, how you struggle with Israel. Like a husband, oh Father. I want to think of Hosea, Lord. In his own house, oh Father. Coming home and the wife has left. Coming home and the wife has left. Not because he didn't know where she was. He exactly knew where she was. Hallelujah. But the father, he still went for her. But can you imagine in a home, Isaiah, Isaiah perhaps cooking for his children. Amen. Cooking for Luhama, Luhama and Luhami and Jezreel. The mother is not there. It's not because she was evil, but it's because she was a representation of what you have gone through with Israel. She didn't wake up one morning and said, I want to leave my husband or Sarah. I want to leave my children. No! It was about Israel. You wanted to manifest your love. Father, you are a believing husband that takes your wife and cleanses her. As Jesus takes the church, Heavenly Father, his own body, Lord, and cleanses her, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. There is no greater love that you took your own body. Lay it down for your disciple, for your friends. But if Father, we are told, you died for us. Father, I find myself believing it so. I find that people on earth today believing you died for them. What a love, Lord. When we want to give up, we think about Israel. When we want to give up, we think about the wife of Hosea. Then, Father, we return to you. Father, when we want to say we can't do it, then we return to you. When we think, Father, we are not any worth, then we think about your love. It is all about you, Lord. Restore your people, Lord Jesus. Restore, Father, Lord God, as you shall do to Israel. Those, Father, whose feet are weak, oh, Father, strengthen them again, oh, Father. May they love you, Lord Jesus, and we are depending upon your love. Bless your people, Lord Jesus. Bless the sick among our, our midst. No, don't, not bless them, but heal them, oh, Father. Bless those who are looking for a blessing. We thank you, we bless you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.